play you this and then I'll explain how the song transformed into a different kind of a song. You ask me if I love you I choke on my reply I'd rather injure you with honesty than mislead you with a lie And who am I to judge you of what you say or do I'm only just beginning to see the real you and sometimes when you touch the honesty is too much but I have to close my eyes and hide Romance and all its strategy leaves me battling with my pride. Oh, oh, but through the insecurities, some tenderness survives. I'm just another writer, so trapped within my truth. A hesitant prize fighter, trapped within my youth. And sometimes when we touch, The honesty is too much I have to close my eyes And hide At times I'd like to break you And drive you to your knees At times I'd like to break through Hold you in the sleep Anyway, I think you get the idea. Um, you know, strangely enough, you know, I, I had a bit of success already at this point. I, I'd already had a record deal with RCA, which which I I walked out of. Uh, People like Harry Belafonte were flying me to New York in Feliciano because they were interested in recording my song. So I, so I was pretty, you know, uh, you know, I, I suppose the word would be advanced because I started at such a young age, you know, and, would, and did it all the time. That being said, um, you know, a year later, everything opened up for me. I signed my first major record deal. I put out two albums in two years. Bam, both of them were gold in Canada. I was touring around the world. The records were doing pretty well around the world. And, you know, at the age of 22, you know, I felt as though all my dreams had come true. I was in Los Angeles, um, you know, meeting with my record company and my music publisher uh, in 1977, and the head of the publishing company said, Dan, you're one of my favorite lyric writers, but I think you still ha don't have what it takes to write the great, big, iconic American hit. Uh, you need someone that really knows how to write music, music that can give your words even more power. He said, I just signed this guy named Barry Mann, who wrote You've Lost That Love and Feeling on Broadway, Kicks. we got to get out of this place. And I think that if his music was uh, found your right lyric, you guys could have the same impact as Bernie Taupin and Elton John. Well, I was quite, quite uh, hurt, humiliated, angry. Uh, you know, the idea that I had to write with anybody was anathema to me. But at the same time, I was curious to meet this guy because he was obviously monumentally successful as a songwriter, and he'd written, you know, some of the greatest songs of all time. So we got together in, in, at the ATV, my publishing company's building, in Hollywood, and we were in this little small room, not much bigger than this piano, and he started hurling all these musical ideas at me, because I'd come from the school where songs could only come from searing experience, you know, climbing Mount Everest, or for me, sexual torment always worked. You know, the more women rejected me, the more I seemed to write. And the notion of having to write to a, a music the way a chemist, you know, fills a prescription seemed horrifying to me. So what I said to Barry is I said, well, I don't think I can write like this, but I do have a lyric at the bottom of my guitar case, and you may find this lyric, you know, something that you'd like to write music to, but don't, don't feel any kind of pressure. I didn't want to tell him that I'd written a whole song, so he would be thinking I was giving him my discards. Well, I left the, uh, the Sony 
little music room, went to uh, the living area to call a cab. Uh, it took me about five minutes to find the right cab company and explain where it was. And I went back into the piano room, and Barry had already written the music. <laughs> I was shocked. I, I, you know, it wasn't until later that I discovered that even though he had made millions and millions as a songwriter, he still did his homework. He listened to my first two albums, studied my voice, studied the tones that really worked with my voice, studied the kind of lyrics that I wrote. You know, like, you know, there's, there's no, uh, you know, coincidence that, say, Tiger Woods or the Williams sisters are, are the best at what they do because they practice more. So he practiced, he did his homework. Uh, and I wasn't sure about, I was so used to hearing my own music that I wasn't sure about this music. It seemed so foreign to, to my ear. But uh, what I realized Barry had done is that he had taken a very intense lyric that people originally had told me was too intellectual, too analytical, too intense, and put almost a childlike sing-song melody to it especially in the chorus, therefore taking away some of the intensity and giving it that kind of, uh, giving the lyric a whole other kind of uh, impact. And I've never yet seen such a huge dramatic change of how just changing the music and have a slight difference with the music, with the lyric. And this song went on to be, well, it, it just, uh, what can I say, it, it literally has changed my life. Um, uh, so the only thing I really did musically to it, you know, it was pretty clear kind of I did the lyric, he did the music, was the B section, um, Barry had the, the melody on top of an Elton John song. Tell me if you guys can remember this. Tell me if you guys can uh, identify the song. So this is what uh, held the music point originally. Who am I to judge you? No, he didn't. Who am I to judge you? And what you say or do? So who am I? To judge you was right on top of maybe you'll find a replacement Elton John biggest selling pop singer in the world at the time from Yellow Brick Road right yeah, so when I was in the studio because you never really stopped rewriting you, right up to when you're doing the vocal all I did is I did a minor third harmony to that melody so instead I did a who am I to judge you and just that slight change made up the total difference to whether I got sued <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to play you uh, the song with Barry's music. And you'll notice there's certain little lyric changes. And uh, this is, I never went to songwriting school, I didn't study. But I kind of, it, I kind of knew intuitively that that words had to scan properly, like pebbles across the ocean, right? The words have to sound as good as the literal meaning. And sometimes that means that a lyric may not be quite as poetic as a poem. For example, I wrote, I'd rather injure you with honesty than mislead you with a lie. That was my original. But with Barry's music, I just naturally changed it to, I'd rather hurt you honestly. Now, frankly, I like injure you better. It's a more visceral word. Yeah, and it's not, not as common, but it just did not work within the scansion of the song. There's a big difference between writing a pop lyric and writing a poem. Okay, here we go. My mom says she never wants to hear the song again, so I apologize to any of you who feel that you've heard this too much, and please do not tell my mom. Okay. <laughs> 